With the electric A6 and S6 on their way, some of Audi's core tenants are shipping out here, their front and center. By pure coincidence, I drove this Audi S6 just weeks before the automaker revealed its electric A6 and S6 e-tron. Audi tells that the gas A6 and S6 will live on for some time alongside. Their electric counterparts both were updated for the 2024 model year, but there's no doubt where things are headed. The launch of Audi's new electric sedan recontextualizes its outgoing sedans. The A6 can trace its lineage back to the Audi 100 of 1968, the first car from Audi as we know it today. This S6 reflects a distinctly German approach to auto engineering, come up with an idea and stick with it no matter what. Audi's traditional drivetrain layout of engine ahead of the front-mounted transaxle dates back to the 1930s with the DKW F9, a proposed successor to the Volkswagen Beetle. It's a layout with advantages. It creates lots of interior space and easy packaging of all-wheel drive with a simple drive shaft running rearwards. But it puts the heaviest parts of the car exactly where you don't want them, creating a potential nightmare for vehicle dynamics. Front engine performance cars generally have their power plans mounted as far back behind the front wheels as possible. Other than Subaru, Audi is pretty much alone in this approach to packaging. This is where the trope of Audi's understeer comes from, and there is some truth to it. So, it would seem this layout would make an odd base for a sports sedan. But, I think we must consider how people actually use cars like this. Is anyone taking an S6 to a track day? Probably not. Are people getting up early to carve canyons with one of these? I doubt it. They're using it like any old luxury sedan, one that happens to be faster than most. In this way, the S6 succeeds. While facelift ed for 2024, the S6 is by far the oldest of the German mid-sized luxury sedan trio. With new versions of the Mercedes-Benz E-Class and BMW 5 Series debuting last year, I actually think that S an asset. The interior still has lots of sensible physical knobs and switches. And though it has a second screen for climate controls, it works very well. Plus, it has just got that Audi nice feel throughout. The company simply knows how to make a car feel nice. And this one with the extended leather interior, part of the $8,200 prestige package, is downright sumptuous. It has one of those cars that feels right the second you get inside. Long gone are the days of Audi S6Es with silly engines, twin-turbo V8s and even a V10. Though not terribly characterful, the 440 for horsepower twin-turbo V6 is effective, and even musical at times. In the S6, it is bolstered by a 48-volt electric compressor that helps compensate for turbo lag. So there is always good response from low revs, and the 8-speed automatic is smooth and quick through the ratios. Without the for $1,000 S Sport package, which includes rear wheel steering, an electronically controlled rear differential, and a sports exhaust, I don't think this S6 is quite as keen a driver as it could be. Still, it is competent on a fast road with a ride that has never too harsh despite its 21-inch wheels, thank height adjustable air suspension, with adaptive dampers for that. Interestingly, the S6 no longer has a direct rival, at least among gas-powered luxury sedans. Both the BMW 540i and Mercedes-Benz E450 are less powerful, and put less emphasis on performance, though both are a little cheaper. Meanwhile, BMW no longer offers the M550i and the Mercedes AMG E53 is now a 603HP plug-in hybrid that will likely be a lot more pricey than the $76,995 base price of the 2025 S6. We tested a 2024 model, but the car is unchanged for 2025. Plus there is real sleeper appeal here. Maybe not in this admittedly lovely shade of grenadine red, but the S6 is relatively subtle and handsome compared to the new E-Class N5 series. 
get one of these in a dark color. 2. And it will fly well under the radar. Like so many of Audi S cars, it is easy to see the S6 fitting well into your life. It is not the most thrilling for door on the market by any means. But as a luxury daily driver with some GT Bonafides, it is a worthy option. It drives well, without asking the owner to make sacrifices for its performance. I think there is real charm here too. I am a romantic when it comes to automotive history. And I do appreciate the stubbornness of Audi rigidly sticking with a formula it knows. Even if a lot of people would argue it as not the right approach. It has the same sort of thing as Porsche sticking with the rear-mounted flat 6 in the 911. Even as rear-engine cars have been otherwise abandoned. That is something you really only get with German automakers. This mechanical layout still has some years left ahead of it. After this gas power to 6 bows, Audi will replace it and the S7 with a single model carrying the S7 moniker. Just as it did with the A4 and A5. Still, the electric age will eventually see Audi abandoning. A thing it has been doing for decades. It is happening across the auto industry. And while I of course don't want to say it as a bad thing. It is a thing. We are losing some ties to the past. Thank you for watching this video. Keep watching for other latest videos. Thank you.